Dhul Qarnayn, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. He conquered land after land in order to spread the true message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he journeyed west on one occasion, his journey took him to a strange place. There, he found a group of people who lived near a hot spring of muddy water. The place was located so far in the west that when the sun set, it seemed as though it disappeared into the water. The story of Dhul Qarnayn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the king of all kings and has the power to do whatever he wants. He says in the Quran, say, O Allah, master of kingdoms, you give kingdom to whomsoever you want and you take the kingdom away from whomsoever you want. You honor whom you want and you dishonor whom you want. In your hand is all good indeed, you are able to do all things. Dhul Qarnayn Rahmatullahi Alayhi was one of the blessed people whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had made a king. He provided him with power and everything necessary to rule the land as a just and powerful king. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, Indeed, we established him on earth with great power and we gave him the means of everything. His kingdom stretched across the entire globe, making him one of the few kings who had been given such a blessing. He was also very religious and established the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He neither abused his power nor did he harm or oppress any people. The journey to the West. He conquered land after land in order to spread the true message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he journeyed West on one occasion, his journey took him to a strange place. There he found a group of people who lived near a hot spring of muddy water. The place was located so far in the west that when the sun set, it seemed as though it disappeared into the water. Among this group of people, there were those who associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and did not believe in his oneness. However, some people among them were good. They had high morals and were good of good character. When Dhul Qarnayn rahimahullah came across these people and saw their situation, he was granted a choice by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to either punish the people or be merciful to them. Being a kind and merciful king, he chose to be merciful. He also began inviting the people to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, encouraged good behavior and guided them to honesty and high morals. Those who listened and accepted his message, he treated with kindness and described their rewards that waited for them in paradise. However, those who still disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even after learning about the truth, were punished. Journey to the East. Later, Dhul Qarnayn rahimahullah journeyed eastward. He traveled far into the East. Then when the sun rose, it seemed as though it originated from there. In that place, he found another group of very simple individuals. These individuals hardly had any trees or buildings to shade them from the scorching heat of the sun. When the sun was very hot, they dug tunnels and hid in them. Though slightly surprised by their behavior and state, Dhul Qarnayn rahimahullah did the same as he did with the previous group of people. He invited them to the true belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also taught them good character and morals. Those who refused to accept the truth and give up their bad ways were punished. Those who listened and accepted his advice were treated kindly and were told about their reward in paradise. Ya Juj and Ma Juj. Soon after, Dhul Qarnayn rahimahullah continued his travels. This time his journey took him to a path between two towering mountains. As he traveled beyond the mountains, he discovered another group of people. They were hard working and very helpful to each other. They spoke a language that was strange to Dhul Qarnayn rahimahullah, making it difficult for him to understand what they said. At the same time, the people also found it difficult to understand Dhul Qarnayn rahimahullah as they did not understand his language. After much difficulty, they informed him about a group of harmful, destructive and terrible people from two tribes called Ya'juj and Ma'juj. 
They lived in the valley between the mountains and were huge in number. From time to time they came and attacked the people, causing all sorts of trouble and damage to their land and belongings. The terrified people requested the help of Dhul Qarnayn Rahimahullah. They asked him to build a tall barrier between the, the mountains, which would hold Ya'juj and Ma'juj back. Dhul Qarnayn Rahimahullah, being a kind and loving person, agreed to help them. They offered to pay him generously for his work, but he refused stating that which my Lord has given me is better than anything I would want from this world. However, he asked for a group of strong people to help him build a great barrier. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only blessed Dhul Qarnayn rahimahullah with power, but he also gave him great intellect. Dhul Qarnayn ordered huge blocks of iron and began building the barrier. He started at the bottom, placing the blocks one on top of another till he reached the top of the mountains, filling the width and height of the gap. After he finished building an iron layer, he heated the iron till it was burning hot. He then ordered that molten copper be brought, which he poured onto the barrier. As the copper cooled, it joined with the iron, making an extremely strong barrier. Towards the end of time, Allah will cause the barrier to collapse letting out Ya'juj and Ma'juj. The work was now complete and between the people and Ya'juj and Ma'juj stood a strong towering barrier. The people congratulated Dhul Qarnayn Rahimahullah and those who helped him for their fine work. The barrier was so strong and high that the tribes of Ya'juj and Ma'juj could not climb, could neither climb nor break through it. Dhul Qarnayn Rahimahullah thanked Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and said, this is a mercy from my Lord. But when the promise of my Lord comes, he shall level it down to the ground and the promise of my Lord is always true. So therefore, as we said, towards the end of time, Allah will cause this great barrier to collapse, letting out these two terrible tribes who will cause chaos and destruction on earth. Lessons. We should remember that when we grow up, Allah may place us in positions of power. We may not become kings, but he may give us authority and power over other people. In that instance, we should never abuse power or treat them harshly or unfairly. Also, wealth and power can cause arrogance, which can make a person look down on others. We should be careful of this too, as both wealth and power are blessings from Allah. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, he can take them away from us. Allah says in the Quran, so remember me and I shall remember you and show thankfulness to me. Do not be ungrateful to me. It is very important that we remind ourselves daily of the great blessings given to us by Allah. Allah says, if you are grateful to me, then I shall increase my favors upon you. But if you are ungrateful, then my punishment surely is severe. Being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just by saying words of thanks, but also by using every blessing in the right way. So with the blessing of our tongue, we should always speak the truth and say good words to people and never swear or lie. With the blessing of our eyes, we should never watch anything haram. And with the blessings of our ears, we should never listen to anything haram. We also learn from the story that we should always be helpful to people, especially if they ask for help. On the one hand, the Prophet ﷺ told us, Allah continues to help his servant for as long as his servant continues to help his brother. On the other hand, he said, there is not a Muslim who abandons another Muslim in a situation where their respect is being abused and their honor is being attacked, except that Allah will abandon them in a situation they were in the situation where they will really pray for Allah's help. We should also do our best to invite people to Islam. That is to give da'wah. And also teach our friends and family about Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Ali Radiallahu An, if Allah guides a person through you, it is better for you than all that is in this world. <laughs>